I am Pramod Srivastava, PhD MD. I am Director of the NIAI Cancer Center at the University of Connecticut School of Medicine in Farmington, Connecticut, USA. So in the 1990s, especially in cancer immunology or cancer immunotherapy, there was no genomics. Um, the whole idea of genomics coming into it has come about only in the last five or six years because only in the last five or six years can we look at the entire genome of a patient. What we can do today is to take a patient who comes in the clinic, take their cancer, take their normal tissue. We can read the entire genome, both normal and the cancer, within about a week. And we can compare how it is different within another week. Basically, in two weeks' time from surgery or from biopsy, we can pinpoint all the positions where this cancer is different from the normal tissue. This capacity didn't exist, at least didn't exist in a practical way until about 2008, 2009, maybe 2010 really. Now we can sequence a genome for about a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, pretty much the cost of uh, an MRI scan, a little more than that. But this was uh, unimaginable. Uh, and so there is no comparison between 1990s and today. It's, it's like a whole different world with a different language, different level of precision, and different levels of possibilities. They certainly are not a reality today. Uh, that's just a fact that they're not. Uh, could they be a reality in, let's say, 10 years' time? I would say without any question. It's not a question of if. It's a question of when and how and where. Um, the way we treat cancer today um, really is not very effective. Barring cancers of children and some rare human cancers, for most of the adult human solid cancers, which are the big killers, breast, colon, lung, uh, prostate, um, compared stage for stage, there is not a whole lot of difference between 50 years ago and today. In terms of outcome, there isn't that much difference. And the reason is that the things that we use for these treatments, that is chemotherapy and surgery, they don't really discriminate. Certainly chemotherapy doesn't discriminate between normal tissues and cancers in any real way. It kills cancers, it kills normal tissue also. That's why you have all the side effects. And the whole goal is to traverse that very narrow lane where you damage the cancer more than you damage the normal tissue. And that pathway is really extremely narrow. Um, cancer vaccines are a whole different category. They are specific for the cancer. Take, for example, antibiotics. They are wonderful drugs. Why are they such wonderful drugs? Very simple reason. Because they target physiological pathways that don't exist in us. They exist only in bacteria. So they kill the bacteria. They don't even touch us. They are specific. The more specific a drug, the better it is. It's a very simple principle. The cancer vaccines of the kind we are talking about now, made by guidance from the genome, comparing the cancer and the normal genome, to find what is specific in the cancer and to use that as a vaccine. That will be the kind of vaccine with the same kind of specificity as antibiotics do. And so, to me, that's not a question of, of, uh, of, of, uh, of if. It's just a question of, will it be in India? Will it be in America? Will it be in Europe? Will it be in Japan? Will it be first against this cancer, then that cancer? Will it be this company or that? But it's not, a, not an if at all. Absolutely not. And it will be a, it will be a multi tens of billions of dollars a year industry. And uh, in the beginning, it will be used with existing drugs. 
at some point it will begin to replace existing treatment. Indian companies have a tremendous amount of expertise in delivering uh, good drugs at a reasonable cost, good safety record, and they make lots of money. Um, I think what they haven't done is to develop new drugs. And uh, I think this is a chance for an Indian company to participate with us in development of, of cancer vaccines and a cutting edge technology. So am I interested? Absolutely interested. And there are many ways for Indian companies to participate. They could participate simply as investors. They could participate as, uh, as uh, wanting to actually make the, many, uh, the vaccines in India. Uh, they could participate in helping doing clinical trials in India. So there are many ways to do it, but I'm very keen on participation of Indian industry in cancer vaccine development. Very, very keen. As I mentioned, they could participate in clinical trials. They could invest in the company. They, they could do part of the manufacturing here. I mean, any which way. I mean, there are many ways to participate. And, and I'm open to all of those possibilities. That's a, that's a, we were talking about just in the session before, how not a single new drug has come out of India. And that, by definition, suggests that there is no R. Um, and there probably is no D either. Uh, there is, a, there is a, I mean, most of the effort has gone into generics and some biosimilars. And those are very important things because they still uh, build skill set to do all these things which are important. But it's not the same as R&D. So I, 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 I mean, it, it's possible that I don't know more then I, uh, 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 but at least from my view of it, I don't see much R um, in, in Indian pharma. Because effort has been mainly towards generics and biosimilars. And as I said, you know, I don't, I don't belittle that effort because that's, I mean, you, look, India is the home to the second largest number of FDA approved manufacturing facilities. Second largest number after the US. That has required enormous expertise, which now exists in India. So that took a lot of work. Um, uh, the work to do all the chemistry and to create the generics and so on and so forth, that requires a lot of work. So I'm not belittling that effort. It's just that uh, developing new drugs through real R is just a different kettle of fish. And on that, maybe that much hasn't happened. Maybe it's just a stage of development. But I think that just tells you how important it is for that to happen. And, uh, and the work that I'm talking about here, it provides Indian pharma an opportunity to participate in a cutting edge development to generate completely brand new drugs. Well, functional genomics is uh, it essentially coupling genes, which is structure, to function. What do they actually do? And, uh, and, uh, and uh, this is being done by lots of, lots of institutions, uh, research institutions, and by companies, and that's just a matter of work, and eventually we'll get, we'll, we'll get to know for every gene as to what does it do in what particular cell type, and that'll be hugely, hugely beneficial. That's just work to be done, and work that's already happening, and it's essential for drug development, for example.